Like most kids nowadays, I went online, I went on Google. The first thing I searched was how to start a business online. And as it went along, you know, with the flow, look through a bunch of pages, reading a bunch of stuff, listen to podcasts. And it's funny that one of the pod, I listened to a podcast where the guy, one of the guests, he was, he started a business making multiple six figures completely off Instagram. And it hit me, okay, that sounds very interesting. Why don't I try that? Welcome to the Passion Struck Podcast. My name is John Miles, a former combat veteran and multi-industry CEO turned entrepreneur and human performance expert. Each week we showcase an inspirational person or message that helps you unlock your hidden potential and unleash your creativity and leadership abilities. Thank you for joining us today on the show and let's get igniting. Welcome to the Passion Struck Podcast. Tony Robbins said, success is doing what you want to do, when you want, where you want, with whom you want, and as much as you want. And I think this is a great lead in to my interview today with entrepreneur David Dang, who is absolutely living out those words by Tony Robbins. Today, we're gonna to talk about how he grew his Instagram following to 2 million people and his secret to doing it. We're also going to unpack his journey to becoming passion struck and the advice that he has for entrepreneurs everywhere. I'm so excited about this interview, but before we get to it, let me tell you a little bit more about David. David Dang is the creator of Entrepreneur Facts on Instagram. He started by creating an Instagram page for his own personal growth to now sharing his ideas to millions of followers around the world. He runs a marketing agency that helps entrepreneurs and businesses who want to build a following on Instagram, establish authority and build leads. And he calls that his superpower. He wants to help entrepreneurs to get their messages out to those lives that will be changed by its message. So much here to unpack and so happy to have you on the show. Now let's get igniting. Thank you so much for joining the Passion Struck Podcast. And today I am so excited to welcome David Dang to the show. David, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, my pleasure. David, the purpose of our show is to help passion go viral by helping growth seekers everywhere understand how to unlock their hidden potential and unleash their creativity and leadership abilities. I remember reading about you that you first got your start in your teenage years, and I wanted you to discuss that a little bit more for our listeners today. It started pretty pretty uh, spontaneous, random, I suppose. Um, I think it all started around when I was 16, 17 years old, so just about a decade ago. And back then, it's funny, that's when I first got my iPod Touch. And back then, I had trouble sleeping. When I sleep, I prefer to listen to some audio, have some sound, some noise in the background. And then I usually play, have the TV on in the background. But then one day, for some reason, I decided, OK, let's not, why not try some audio book? And that's when I got my first iPod Touch. I downloaded an audio book on my iPod. And yeah, I, I looked through the the catalog of audio books available, audio books. Then I see the section, self-help. Then as it goes through there, through there, I take a look at a couple of books. And I, I remember one of the book, one of the first book I listened to was from Tony Robbins is um, Unlimited Unlock, uh, Unlimited Power, I, Unlimited Power or uh, Awaken the, the Giant Within. I don't one of those, I don't remember exactly which one. And then, yeah, I, that's pretty much how I started to get into personal development, self-help, just by listening to audio book in the background before I go to bed. That's kind of sparked my interest in it. And then from there on, I just started reading more books, find out more about the self-help world and yeah, start educating myself from there. So going back to your teenage years, what were you really interested in? What drove you at that point? In your life, I was no. a really normal kid, to be honest. Like I like video game back then, ten years ago. Like I used to like all most kids nowadays. I would play video games all day, literally 
easily 10 hours a day easily so i was like hardcore gamer but then for some like was it like any normal kid i play sport i go to school and i hang out with friends as well but the funny thing is that once once i started to get into self help for some reason i completely stopped playing video game at one point i just suddenly realized why do i waste all my time playing all these video games i get nothing at the end of the day in the game i i could be really good very successful in the game in theory but then in real life it's it does nothing to me and yeah it's just one day i just decide okay i'm done video game i don't want to play it anymore and i just stop playing like like at that moment like i stopped playing video game almost completely like now i only play like small game on my phone a couple minutes here and there's it in my free time just to relax and stuff but like i just stop playing video game completely once i realize that like i'm like okay it's sort of like a waste of my, my time i don't get any value from it for some reason it doesn't hit me so yeah that's that that was the type of kid i i used to be back in my teenage years and i see that you're in winnipeg today is that where you grew up oh, i actually immigrated to canada in uh 2006 so i was about 12 years old back then i immigrated from vietnam and okay. when i moved here i didn't speak any english at all i'm sure you can probably tell based on my accent and the way how i speak yeah i didn't speak a single word of english it's been a long journey for me actually when i look back at it it's it's been a long journey yeah so i moved to canada when i was 12 years old and it's been yeah a long time now so when you first started listening to those self help books i understand you were probably doing it in vietnamese is that correct or were you doing it in english yeah, when it first started actually it was in vietnamese yeah so my first couple i think most of them was in vietnamese i started listen to english audio book i guess two or three years after when i started university where i guess that's when i start to to listen to more english audio audio books and if anything i say audio books completely changed my life because as a kid like most kids now today i hated reading i i don't read books at all so yeah audio books really got me into it is that's what really changed everything for me and then later on when i see the value of reading books i started to be more interested in physical books and you can see i have a small book shelf which is a couple of books not a lot but yeah that's that's my that's my story <laughs> well i really like your story because growing up i had learning difficulties as well and so for me audio books are a great outlet that allow me to learn not only on the go but complement everything else that i read in the normal ways and listen to so i wanted for the listener's sake for you to talk a little bit more about the role that these audiobooks made in your life yeah i i have an audible account like where i get like uh, an audiobook every month and yeah like sometimes it, it would take me an an average audiobook is about i guess 8 to 10 hours but if i were to read a physical book it it would take me at least twice as much 20 hours to to finish that same book in the physical form but sometimes when i listen to an audio book if i really really like the book i would just buy the physical book and then reread it again in the physical form so that's something i do i i don't know it it's, it helped me to i guess internalize the the knowledge in the book better by by reading actually reading it but listen to it will help me consume it faster that's great and i use a similar technique i like to complement my audiobooks with the written text ones and i don't necessarily like to read them online although i will sometimes because for me as a constant learner it's important for me to use cues that help me memorize things or remember things in these books so i like to use a highlighter to help me get through them and highlight important points that i can reference key points that i want to refer back to in the future yes that's the main point for me the main point of physical book is to go back into a certain section that i remember let's say i read a book like maybe years ago and then i said need i remember a concept from the book that i need for my business or whatever i'm doing at that particular moment okay i need to go back with all the work it's a little bit harder for you to pinpoint that exact location and then just go to that section and then just to listen to the part you want to listen right so it's a bit harder that way so a physical book 
you have the book there. You can just flip through the pages and find that exact section and then just read that section. It's just much easier that way. David, did any of these books influence your direction when you went to college? If I remember correctly, you got a degree in marketing. Is that correct? I graduated from the University of Manitoba with a marketing and entrepreneurship degree. And definitely, yeah, the books, those books definitely pick the major for me. Uh, one of the books, I guess, I think the, the two biggest books that influenced my decision to go into business was uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People and Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So the first one was from Dale Carnegie. I it's one of the first book I I I think I think I actually read that one. Like fizz, I read uh, the ebook. No, I didn't listen to the audio book on that. I actually read the ebook of that one, and uh, because of the all the most of the example in the book were business related, so I can then what it got me thinking, okay, yeah, I actually kind of like business. The examples in the book kind of, it's kind of interesting and cool. So it got, got that thinking in me. Okay. I, business seemed interesting. And back then at that age, everyone, we all think, okay, what kind of career should we pick? Right. And it kind of implanted the seed in me to, to become a business person. Um, also the second book is rich dad, poor dad. I'm sure is the classic yes. book. A lot of people have read it. Yes. Yeah, talk about, financial freedom, investing, and then of course, a lot about business as well. So that's the second book that got me thinking, okay, I kind of want to be a businessman. But actually in my first year of university, I actually went into psychology because I guess how to win friends and influence people has talked a lot. It's more about psychology than business. So I'm like, okay, I like psychology. Let's go into that. But after the first year, I switched into business because I realized, okay, I, I prefer to, to do business better. And yeah, that's how, that's how I picked my, my major. <laughs> that was how okay. I picked my major, yeah. David, I'd like to understand a little bit more about your first job outside of the university. I have a son who's 22, and he just started his first job a few months ago. Before that, he did internships, which helped him prepare for that. But I think it would be interesting for the listeners to hear, you know, what was your path coming out of college? During my, during the years in university, I actually had different type of jobs. I done door to door sales. I worked in retails. I worked like a bunch of different type of job. And one of those was to work in a corporate environment in a cubicle. I was working for the government here of my city and it was for actually a year and a half that I spent there, both full-time this summer, part-time during the year. The job was great. The people there were great, but I couldn't help but hated it for some reason. I just can't stand the feeling of sitting in a cubicle every day, doing the same thing over and over again, and then stick with a routine. I have to wake up early and then take a bus, go to work, and then sit there until... 4 30 and then go home is just the routine is feel really tedious for me and then i said know that okay and also with all the influence of the books i was reading especially rich that poor that if, if after you read that book i think nobody really want to work a job anymore so it's kind of in me like embrace i was already embracing the idea of being my own boss, start my own business. So I knew by then that, okay, I do not want a job after school. Like that would be my my last, my plan B, my last case scenario. If I could not figure out what to do after that, then the worst case scenario, okay, I'll get a job, work for a couple of years and then figure out my own way to start my own business later. So having a job was definitely not like a good plan for me. Then in my, that's also why I studied entrepreneurship as well with the whole, the whole point of that was to start my own business later, right? So, and then in my last year of university, before I graduate, okay, I knew that, okay, next year, I'm graduating next year. What am I going to do? Am I going to start my business or get a job? And of course, I, I don't like, I didn't like the idea of getting a job. So let, I need to figure out a business. Okay, what kind of business will I start in? Back then, I didn't feel like I was ready to start an actual business on my own because, well, as a student, I didn't have much experience in terms of starting a, a startup or starting my like a business where I would be the one who running it, put my own money in, potentially risk losing it. 
So I thought, okay, I have one year left to figure out something that would be safe enough for me to take the risk on before I have to to get a job. So like most <clears throat> like most kids nowadays, I went online, I went on Google. The first thing I searched was how to start a business online, and as it went along, you know. That with the flow, look through a bunch of pages, reading a bunch of stuff, listen to podcasts, and it's funny that one of the pod I listened to a podcast where the guy, one of the guests, he was he started a business making multiple six figures completely off Instagram, and it hit me. Okay, that sounds very interesting. Why don't I try that? And back then, I didn't even have an Instagram account. It was my first time ever create. I started to create an Instagram account on that day. And years later, so by the by the so a year later, by the time I graduated, actually I didn't even even monetize that Instagram account. It was entrepreneurship facts. It's still running now. Has two million followers. I want to stop you right there because when I saw you first on Instagram, you caught my eye because you were not the typical type of person and promoter that I see on Instagram. Many are pushing a physical product, and you were pushing more of inspiration in the way that you were delivering your message. You took a completely different approach, which I thought was very unique in how you were building up your followers and the content that you were showing. Can you discuss your approach in a bit more detail and why it took off? Well, I guess to quickly summarize my, my story. So yeah, by, by the time I graduated university, then I was already making more than a full-time income doing my, my e-commerce stuff. I was doing a bit of e drop shipping, e-commerce, and a bunch of other online business, online stuff that making me money that was a little more than a full-time income. So by then I didn't need to get a job because if I were to get a, a job with my marketing degree, because I don't know if you could really get a job with entrepreneurship degree, but with marketing, I would be making less than what I was making back then. So I'm like, okay, I'm good now. I don't need to get a job. My goal succeeded. I accomplished my, my goal for myself. I don't need to get a job. And then... Wow. And what were you thinking about at that exact moment, David? It, it feels great because I that was my, the goal that I set for myself, right? So yeah, it's it, it, it feels great. But then of course, as human, we always want to strive forward, set higher goal for ourselves. We doesn't matter what you do. By the time you achieve your whatever you think that is your ultimate goal, when you got it, you will want something else higher. So pretty quickly, I... I get over that. And then I said, higher goal for myself. How did you finally know that this was the right approach? And what gave you the confidence to give it a try and to use this to multiply your brand? Honestly, it, it was mainly because I didn't know how to monetize it, to be honest. And the reason, part of the reason why I be able to pay was, of course, to eventually build a business around it afterwards. But when I first started, I created the content with intent that because I only create share the content I'm interested in that I feel that that is valuable to me. Is I like I said I like self help, I like motivation, I like inspirational quotes and interesting facts about business and entrepreneurship. So I just share those things on the account, and it just took off from there. People start following, and I just didn't know what to do, how to monetize it, and then yeah, that's mainly why I didn't monetize it in my first two years of, of starting that account. I think that's also helped attracting people to start following me. Yeah, that, that was, that's how I came up with the approach in. Well, I think that's really interesting because I've recently written a book and I'm talking to many agents and publishers about it. The interesting thing is, is that they all want a large audience before they want to bring you on to sell the book. And I kind of want the reverse, their help in giving me that book so I can build my audience. How did you approach the audience building with Instagram? And is it the same philosophy or is it different? So, I agree, so, but I don't think it's necessary. Either way works, is this which approach you want? So if you want to get the following first before you get your book published, there's a way to do it without requiring a book. It's not, and if you want to do the other way, it's just different approach depend on which, which side you like which approach you pick, right? So each of them has different methods to accomplish th that goal. So David, with your marketing background, I'm sure you've covered this in the past, but one of the things that I work with the most with my clients is how do you develop a personal brand? Many of them 
are doing career pivots or career reinventions. And one of the things they really struggle with that I help them to overcome is creating that personal brand, creating that brand story, and really helping them become their own salesperson. Can you talk along those lines in the importance of the brand? So, I mean, it took me two years to build the entrepreneurship fact page, and it wasn't a personal brand. I was behind the account. I just create content, share the content, collect the content, curate the content, and share it on that account. And then people, if they like it, they follow the account to to see more of content. And I guess your question is, how do you get more people to follow you, right? By building a personal brand, how to get people to know you and follow you. Really, the only, here's the secret, the big secret to get people to follow you, not just Instagram, but any type of social media platform. The only secret, number one secret is to have content that people want to see and want to see more of it. That's it. If people like your content and they want to see more of it, of course, they're going to follow you to see more of it, right? That's really the only secret. So now from when you know that, then I guess here, one of the good, I don't remember where I learned this one, but the, one of the secrets to success is to ask yourself the right question. So when you ask yourself the right question, you will be able to unlock all the secret to success. So the first, so now let's say, how do you create how do you get more followers? How to get people to follow your social media, yeah. right? So I'm going to tell you, ask yourself the question, why should people follow you? Well, when you can answer that, then you know how to get people to follow you. Give people a reason to follow you through your content. What can you do to your target audience that will get them to be interest in, interested in following your account? What do they get out of it? Think of it this way. I, I like to think of it as, Creating content is like a business transaction. What you're selling is your content. And what your what your target audience pay you is not with money, but they pay you attention. That's the currency. So you sell your content in exchange for their attention. That's the, that's really the business that you're in, right? So what kind of content do they want to see right now? What kind of content are they searching for? What kind of content, if they scroll through Instagram or Facebook or whatever social media platform that you want to grow in, as they scroll through, what will stop them and be like, okay, hey, I have this problem right now. This person is delivering the content that's helping me with that problem. Whether I'm just bored, really bored at home, I have nothing to do. And then the content is really funny, entertaining. You're solving a problem for that person. And then they're going to pay you not money, but they pay you attention. And then if if your content is good, they want to see more of that content in the future, they're going to follow you. That's really it. There's no secret. David, when you ask yourself that question, what was the content? What was that secret that got people to want to follow you? I am so interested to hear your answer on this. So what made people follow me is because they guess they want inspiration. Because for me, I believe the, the key to success is the mindset. Once you have the right mindset, everything else will take care of itself. I guess some people say, okay, yeah, you can t- spend all your time on the mindset stuff, but if you don't take action, nothing gonna manifest or actualize itself in the real world. I Sure, action is important, but I would argue that if you have the right mindset, you will start taking action. The reason why you're not taking action is because you don't have the, the right mindset yet. Because as human, we don't want to do anything that's meaningless to us. Like, have you ever been in like, if you're hungry, are you just gonna sit there and then not do anything, not find food? Because if you're hungry, you're gonna go and take action, right? Because we we will take action. However, we need a reason. We need a reason, a purpose, some meaning to take that action. Because we don't want to do anything meaningless. That that's not that doesn't give us any value without any reason. So if the reason you're not taking action is because you don't really understand what you're doing, why you're doing it, what is for yet. If you know, really have the right mindset and this perspective, and whatever that is you're trying to accomplish, you will start taking action. So whatever you're lacking, I truly believe it star success truly begins with the mindset. If you have the right mindset, you start taking action. You know what to do. You you know the, the right question to ask yourself and figure out what step, what's to do next. And then you will be very excited, motivated, inspired to take the action. Like you don't need anybody to push you to take the action if you have the right mindset and the right perspective at the problem that you're trying to solve. 
I think yeah, that's I, a bit on the side track of your question, but that is great information. And when I am working with clients, one of the things I try to get them to do is to really focus on their passion journey and to get momentum going. Because if you don't have momentum and commitment to keep moving forward, you're going to get nowhere. So one of the most important things you need to do is actually start. You need to take action. You need to start that journey, no matter how hard it is. It's like starting to push a stop car. At first, it's going to be hard, but once you get it moving, it will get easier and easier and easier. And eventually, you'll reach a point where you're going downhill and it becomes so much easier. You can get in the car and take it down that hill yourself. So I wanted to ask you, with that as a backdrop, as you're trying to push entrepreneur facts down that road and trying to get it moving and monetizing it, what was your philosophy and how did you get that momentum you needed to take it to where it is today? I mean, I just didn't make much money with the Instagram account, but I was really making money with my other stuff because like I say, I did some our e-commerce stuff, drop shipping, and then yeah, and Amazon selling products on Amazon. So I was making money with my other businesses. So I didn't care much about Instagram. So I didn't, so the first two years, I just didn't bother to just really spend much time figure out how to monetize it. But then when I start, I think it, the breaking point was about, I got to a hundred thousand followers. I thought, okay, I have quite a substantial audience now. Let's figure out how to monetize this thing. Let's figure out what I can do with it. So yeah, that's what's the point where uh, that's what's about two years in. It took me two years to get to that 100,000 followers. And that's when I start focusing on, on, okay, let's turn this into a business. And also because I didn't find much of a, a passion or purpose for the e-commerce stuff, because essentially as a buy product and resell to our people at higher price, I didn't feel any meaning in doing that. Sure, I make some money, not a lot, right. just, I, I mean, enough for me to, to be financially independent, but I wasn't making millions or anything, uh, even not in six figures with those business back then. So I just didn't have, I didn't feel motivated on those business. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I really like this Instagram account. I get to inspire people, share some sort of knowledge, uh, not some of my knowledge, but mostly other people knowledge I curated and share, share with my audience. So I, I find more of a meaning in doing it. So I put a focus into it about two years, about two, three years ago. Yeah, that was the point where I, I put my focus on monetizing my audience. So David, one of the things you talk about is finding your superpower. And I think it would be great for our audience to learn how did you come up with your superpower and how did you know when you had arrived at it? Yeah, yeah it, it was quite apparent to me that it's not that I sitting around. So it, it the superpower, it, it didn't happen to me where I just sit around and think, okay, yeah, I want to be help people share the message on, on social media. I didn't just sit and think, okay, and then is it hit me? No, it didn't happen that way. It happened because first I was in university. I just want to explore with online businesses and then online marketing. And then I just start, okay, it was, it's kind of cool that to start an Instagram account to build an audience. I, I was interested and I'm interested in that, in those activities, right? To build an audience and stuff. So, and I do it because simply because I had fun doing it. I enjoyed it. It was in my interest in doing it. I didn't need to be paid. I started the Instagram account saying, okay, I like business. I like the idea of eventually build a business around it, but I didn't care whether or not it would succeed or not. I having fun sharing motivational content and business content on Instagram. It was fun for me. I started doing it and then people start following me. They like the content. And then when I buy, okay, I have this skill set. I have this ability. I have this audience. Let's do something with it. It's very clear to me. My superpower is to build an audience, to help people build a personal brand, to build an audience, to spread the message. So like I didn't think of, so I guess I would phrase it as it's quite obvious to me that's my superpower by then. Like okay. I didn't sit around and think about what my superpower is. It's just there is built, developed over time based on my curiosity and my interest. And then it just happened. Okay, this is my superpower. Did you know that Forbes magazine recently cited that 70% of individuals who do personal development 
masterminds, and one-on-one -on -one coaching benefited from better work performance, increased communication skills, and overall better relationships. And we at PassionStruck are obsessed with self-development, coaching, and mentorship. That is why we've created a free resource to help you unlock your hidden potential. Because people doing great things in business and life are just like you, only they've had a coach along the way. And we've got that covered too. Let us show you the systems and frameworks that we teach growth-minded individuals to help them step into their sharp edges, execute on their passion journeys, and get predictable results time and time again. Go to passionstruck.com slash coaching right now and let's get igniting. David, I think that's a very important point. There are many authors out there, the most prominent being Simon Sinek, who wrote Finding Your Why, who talk about finding your purpose. And I think that's important, but I think cultivating your purpose is even more important. And it's that cultivating that seems to be the missing link in so many people's passion journeys. So with that as a backdrop, you found your purpose, but I'd like to understand, do you think that this is going to be your forever purpose? Is this my life purpose? Is this something I'm gonna do forever? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Like I'm still learning new things every day. Like the way how I approach things is that I would never, because I guess I'm, I'm quite, I, I, I enjoy philosophy a lot, so, it seems like a lot of people we do, almost all of us, we do everything. The more we grow older, the more we do things based on, we do things as a mean to achieve certain ends. Like I'm going to start a business because I want to be rich, to have lots of money. So the end is to be rich. The mean is to start a business. But then they don't even like starting a business. They don't even like running a business. They don't even like the aspects, the tasks, the daily tasks of running a business. They only want the money. So they get themselves into something that they don't even enjoy doing so that they can get something that they think they want. And they pretty much set themselves up for failure because think about it. You, st you started something you don't even enjoy doing because you want something, right? But if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to get to the end point if you don't enjoy the process. So how I approach things is, Instead of thinking of the end point, to me, the end point is that bonuses. The end point to me is the thing I'm going to do by itself. So the end point is with my Instagram account was not to make a lot of money. The end point was I was curious in learning about building an audience, about marketing, about personal branding. And then I was just curious about the possibility of starting an online business. I enjoy that process, that end point. By me starting doing it, I already achieved my goal. I have get to my end point by doing those things because I enjoyed it. I followed my curiosity, my interest that like my interest and I was doing it because it's fun. I already got my end point. And then anything afterwards is just bonuses on top of on top of my enjoyment of doing the things already. I want to stick to this point just for a second. In my upcoming book, I have a chapter called The Bean Turtle Effect. And the purpose of this chapter is to give you an understanding of how to use the big picture and daily task in conjunction with each other. You see, like a turtle, there is a true need to have a vision and a long-term plan that you're heading for. And like the bee, you need to take daily activity seriously that's aligned to that long-term goal. And that is what the bee and turtle effect is all about. And I use Elon Musk as a great example of this point because Elon Musk like the turtle, has this long-term plan to save humanity from itself. And he takes steps daily to achieve that. That is why he's launched so many different companies that are helping him determine that path. SpaceX is a way to do space exploration and get us to Mars. Tesla, so he can experiment with electronic electricity, batteries, and how to prolong their life and use them more effectively. Foreign companies, so he knows how to tunnel and many more initiatives. And he is one of the best at using his daily output and aligning it with that long-term vision. So a way you can apply this to your own life, let's just say you wanna lose 30 pounds. That is your long-term goal that you wanna achieve. Now, what are the daily activities you can do like a bee that take you further down the path towards achieving that goal? It could be eating a keto diet. It could be exercising more. It could be going on a walk. 
It could be spending more time standing at a desk rather than sitting, but it's those daily inputs that matter when it comes to that output. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, because we we all have different goals. We have a lot of goals too. We want to make lots of money, but we also want to like have the freedom to work wherever we want. We also want to, I don't know, like do things that we enjoy, create art, be creative, artistic. Uh, we also want to, I don't know, we, we want a lot of things, right? So instead of like, okay, I want this one thing that do a bunch of things that I don't even enjoy doing to hopefully get that one thing. That's sure, that's one approach of doing it. And the approach I like to pick is, why not let do a bunch of things that I already want to do now that I can do now and then align that with the thing that I also want but require more effort that I, is require more work, longer, bigger, bigger thing, goal than I want that cannot be done right away. Because if you want to make lots of money, it's not going to happen overnight. It takes time, right? Or if you want to get six pack apps, it's not going to happen overnight. You cannot just get it now. It's a bigger goal that in the future. So instead of do the thing, a bunch of things you hate, align all the things that you already want to do that can happen right now easily. Align that to the thing that you want that require more work. So you, with one thing, you pretty much achieve all your goals in, in one thing. But once you start having all that information, you have got to prioritize it. Prioritizing your tasks is one of the most important elements of a successful passion journey, don't you think? You cannot do it all at one time. So what, what I'm saying is that instead of instead of wanting to make a lot of money, with, like just to make a lot of money, I will align that, okay, I also like online marketing. I also like running businesses. I also like learning about business, learning about businesses. Then I align that would make lots of money. I achieve all of those goals. I align that into one straight line. Does it make sense? Or like, let's say, when you get one, let's say you want to work out, like want to get six pack apps, for example, maybe you don't like the workout, the process of workout, working out yourself. Okay, but you like to hang out with your friend, hang out with your buddy. Well, why don't you align that? Okay, I can work out with my buddy. I got that hang out things with my buddy down. Just by working out, I already achieved my goal. And then getting the sick pack app, that's the bigger goal that require more work. But then by by meeting my want of hanging out with my friend, I will get to that sick pack app's goal as well. Does it make sense? Yeah, that makes total sense. Exactly. No one... You're gonna do it anyway. So is it aligned with your with your end goal with the bigger goal? Yeah, for me, if you put me in a job where you want me to be an accountant, you've got the wrong person for that job. I have many talents. But running spreadsheets and getting into that minuscule detail is absolutely not one of them. I am just not going to get excited about it. So that's where if you're a solopreneur looking to expand, you can hire your weakness and bring in that talent to help you or find a different person to do that task so that you can concentrate on the things that you do best. So you were lucky enough to discover your superpower early in age. Others don't have that luxury and it takes much longer. But I think a key thing here is self-identity because self-identity is influenced by so many different things. And we tend to focus on the external ones, what people say, what social media says, what we've heard growing up, what we've heard in school, what we've heard in college, all these influences come bearing down on us. But it's really that focus on the internal conflicts, the philosophical conflicts that we really need to spend more time on. But with that as a backdrop, I wanted to ask you, did any of those external influences negatively impact you on your path? At this point, no. But when I first started, I think the hardest is always when you first started, because there's so many uncertainties when you first started, right? Because you don't know if you're going to get to the goal that you set out for yourself to be or not. And let's say specifically following your passion, following in career aspect, you don't know if you're going to be financially stable or not. You don't know if you're going to make enough money to sustain yourself. And you don't know if you're going to get anywhere with that, whatever you think your passion is. And of course, people will discourage you. Like, why do? So for my case, when I first get, graduated from university, the people around me, including my parents, the people who are the like who are the closest to me, 
my parents, like my uncle, and then even like some of my friends as well, people around me, but like, why don't you go get a job? And like, they just didn't understand it. Like it, to the pe- to the outsider, it seemed like I'm just sitting at home doing nothing. And then it's like, doesn't even make money. So of course it will affect you in your thinking. Like, okay, am I doing this the right thing? Like it, it will it will make you feel insecure. Like you don't know if your decision is right or not, right? Of course it will happen. And but really, if you if you truly believe what you want, like let's if you have the right mindset to it, because I had quite a strong foundation of my mindset back then already, because I read all the books, self-help books to help me build a very solid mindset. I really know what I want to do. And I was willing to, to look back in their eyes for the first year or so, so that I can achieve to my goal. So yeah, it, I, I was able to get through it because I really understand what I want. And also because I am, I was doing it because I was having fun. I enjoy it anyway. It will be much harder if you're doing something you hate. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to start this business. I have no interest in, I hate it. Every every time you do something you feel it's like a chore you don't even enjoy it but then you, the only reason you're doing it because all the people online told you that you would make a lot of money and then the people around you were like are you doing like start to be skeptical about the things you do it, it'd be much harder like why do i spend my day today doing the things that i don't even enjoy doing and then everyone around me is just keep asking me question be skeptical they look down right. on me or whatever is it'll be much harder but if you do something that you really enjoy doing you like then you would treat it like hey i'm just doing this in my like in my free time i was rather do this than watching netflix or play video game this is something i would do for fun in my free time anyway so it's, it'll be much easier for you to to get through that if you re- if you're doing something that you enjoy already exactly just like my son who used to be a gamer. And I remember he recently came over to the house for dinner and we were having a discussion and, and he was telling me about his new job that he just loves. But he said one of the things that he's realizing is that he just doesn't have as much time as he used to, to pursue his passions. And I had to stop him right there. And I told him, you need to make your time more malleable. You need to make sure that you're putting your passions first and that you are prioritizing them. You know, we all have the same amount of time. We all have the same 24 hours, but it's what you do with them that truly makes a difference. And for him, he wants to spend more of his time doing many of the activities that he loves, such as producing music, writing music, you know, playing his piano, his percussion, et cetera. And I said, you just need to make sure that you prioritize that time into your daily schedule and make it a huge priority that you get to do it whenever you want it and put everything else working around that schedule so that you can give yourself that time to work on that thing that you're passionate about. I firmly believe that time is malleable. And if you want to focus on the things that are important to you, you will find the time in your schedule to do them and you will make time malleable for yourself. Because yeah, I, it is fascinating to me that how some people, if given they have the opportunity to do so, like why would people spend time doing the thing that they hate, they don't like doing, just so that they could have the weekends? I, I, well, I guess some, of course, it's hard. Some people, they have bills to pay, they have mortgage, of course. So I guess to those people, I guess the only suggestion I have, sure, work your job enough to pay the bill. And then in your free time, instead of watching Netflix, sitting around do nothing spend the time to do the things that you enjoy doing but figure out a way to align that with your bigger goal with financial stability as well how can you do the thing that you enjoy doing so that you could replace your job but some people they don't need to do that some people if if you enjoy your job you're okay with your job sure do that and then on a the weekend do whatever that you want to enjoy. But if you absolutely hate your job, you cannot stand it, you don't want to do it. An option is sure, work that job to get your bill pays. Then in your free time, spend that, do the things you enjoy to do, and then learn how you can monetize it. Yeah, my son really does love his job and he is so much enjoying the growth it's giving him. 
But the lesson there was how you use your time. Do you use your time going to bars? Do you use your time checking Facebook? Do you use your time going on your Instagram account? Or are you using it to do things like go on Clubhouse and go into a lecture that's truly really going to move your career forward? Are you using it to read, to learn more about something that you want to do that's going to take your life further? Are you using it to work on yourself, your passion journey, and becoming a constant learner? So David, you have accomplished all these things. You have made great strides already in your career. So how did you know that you had accomplished it? What was that moment like? And for the audience out there, how did that moment feel when you had accomplished your goals? And how did you know that it was working? I mean, it worked in because of the result, right? I got the people start following me on social media, both my business account and my personal account. So clearly I can, I have the result to say that, hey, I have this skill set, I have this superpower. So that's how I know. But really, you say succeed, succeed. Only my my goal is very modest, to be honest. My goal, my initial goal was just to to cost like a hundred grand a year, then I'd be happy. That's it. Like I don't need to make millions to be happy. And that's like, yeah, that's really that's all the goal I had. And the main goal for me, to, to me, I det- I I de- define success as being able to do the thing that I enjoy doing, and have the time to do it. Like right? to do the things I want to do when I want to do it. So that means to just do whatever that I want to do on a daily basis. Because I don't, I could make more, way more money than what I'm making right now. But if I if I don't like the task, the daily task that I have to do to get there, then what's the point of making more money? Because if to make more money is to do the thing that I want to do, but I'm doing the thing that I don't want to do to make more money, and then what's the sure I could spend that money down the road, save money down the road to do the thing that I enjoy later, but I'm like, well, I I just prefer to do the thing that I enjoy doing. So yes. I'm making quite comfortable, but but not as much to my full potential. I know I could make more, but I would rather spend the time to do that I enjoy doing more. At this stage in my life, I just prefer to spend more time learning, reading books about philosophy, business, marketing. And then, yes, to me, that's how I define success, being able to do the things that I want to do at this point in my life. It was interesting. A few years ago, I got to meet Sarah Blakely and got to hear her speak. And she was telling me about her company. She's the founder of Spanx and how it was at an inflection point. But she too was at an inflection point. She had become very discouraged by the tasks that she was having to do on a regular basis. And these tasks were just weighing her down to the point that she almost wanted to quit because she reached a point that she absolutely despised coming into work. And then she was talking to her guide that she used to give her coaching. And that guide said, well, are those things that you enjoy doing? And she said, absolutely not. In fact, they're sucking so much out of me. I can't do the things that I truly love, which is design new products, introduce them to the market, work with retailers, get out there and meet customers. And he said, well, the problem you have is that in order to expand your brand, you need to hire your weakness. You need to bring someone on board who can take those reins, take that weight off your shoulder and let you explode and do the things that you do best. And you know what? That's what she did. And after that, Spanx has had a huge ride to billion dollar and more status. But a lot of it was due to her making that choice. And that makes me want to go back to the quote that I said at the beginning of this episode by Tony Robbins. When he said, success is doing what you want when you want, where you want, and with whom you want. So David, what strikes me as really odd here is you've told me previously that in many ways, you don't think your life has changed that much. But from an outsider looking in, it seems like it has changed a lot. So I'd like you to explain more to the audience what it is you exactly mean. I don't think must have changed because I'm, I'm a big believer in passion following your curiosity and passion. So every day, I just when I wake up, I start thinking, what do I want today? What do I want to do today? What am I interested in? What am I curious, like curious about? 
and I go learn about those things. And yeah, if I feel like let's go hiking or skiing, then I would go do that. So that's, and not much different have changed. Even years ago, before I have reached any success, I have always been like that. Like I, I love learning. It's one thing that I really enjoy, learning new, absorbing new knowledge. So yeah, back then, I just spend a lot of time reading, learning, and it's pretty, it's like normal, like I'm pretty normal, like any any average person. So my my life is pretty normal. I don't think there's anything special. I just do whatever I feel like doing on a day day to day basis. And of course, I set goal. I set high goal for myself every day, and then it's the bigger goal that I say, okay, I want to get my business to this level. And then, yeah, I set bigger goals as well. But then I make sure that the thing, the tasks that I do to get to those goals are the things that I want to do, that, I, that I'm passionate about, that curious me, that get me interested and excited. If I don't feel excited, then I either change my goal or change the task at hand to get to that goal. So, yeah, that's, I guess that's my, my daily life <laughs> routine. Okay, David, that is really great. And one of the things that that reminds me of is something from a podcast that I listen to quite frequently, Impact Theory by Tom Bilyeu. If you haven't listened to it, check it out. If Tom Bilyeu doesn't say it one time, he said it a million times, people get so stuck in their self-perceptions that they create huge barriers to success. They get stuck in this mindset, this fixed mindset that they don't have the background, they don't have the education, They didn't come from the right circles. They didn't come from the right areas. And there's no way for them to achieve greatness like they see in other people. And I can tell you, just like Tom says, they are absolutely wrong. And I will just give you an example from my own career. When I was at Lowe's, I was tasked with building a huge data center. You know, this thing was probably 200,000 square feet. And I had worked on data center projects, which were much, much smaller than that but nothing even close to this magnitude. And when I got this opportunity, did I say no to it? No, I said yes, because I knew that I could go out and learn how to do it. I could find the mentors out there. I could go find other companies who had done it and speak to them. I could research the internet. I could talk to construction companies. I knew, even though I hadn't done it before, I had it within me to learn how to do it. And that's exactly what I did. And not only did I build one data center, I built two data centers for Lowe's in a period of about three years that completely changed the dynamics of how we were able to do business continuity and provide better uptime for all our customers. We are so blessed today to have so much information and different things that we can go to that are right at our fingertips. I encourage our audience so much to become constant learners and realize that your mindset is determined by you. And it can be either a fixed mindset or a growth mindset, but you make that decision and you have it within yourself to choose becoming a constant learner, becoming someone who is growth minded and wants to take their life to the next level. So David, with that backdrop, what advice would you give our listeners out there if they wanted to face their fears, overcome their obstacles, and take their life to the next level? Biggest advice, I honestly, the one that changed my life is really a passion for learning. I think that's that's really the key to for me. I, I mean, I don't consider myself as being successful. I, I'm pretty average, so, but really the key thing that got me to where I am today is really my passion for learning. And some people might say, what if I don't like reading, I hate reading, or I don't like audiobook, I just don't like learning at all. Like, I think it's a real a, a, a limiting belief that you're imposing on yourself. I don't believe that is true because if you don't like learning, it's because you haven't found the thing that you're interested in, in learning because we are all learning every single day. We are all learning something new. Like if you like video games, guess what? By playing that video games, or you're playing something new, you're learning about the video games. You're like, hey, how do I... S- achieve this thing in this video game you're going to go online you're going to search how to like figure out how to get whatever achievement in the video game or whatever that is or if you like watching movies you spend time learning about movies every day 
you research about the movie that you want to watch or what or the TV show, whatever that is, you are learning, you're absorbing information every single day. If you're on social media, you're essentially learning. You browse through your Instagram feed or your Facebook feed, the articles that you read every day, that is learning. That's you are absorbing information. So the difference is now you just have to be strategic about it. So figure out what you like, just pay attention to what you're interested in and then like just build that, build a passion, build an interest in learning and then follow your interest, follow your whatever that's curious you that get you excited to learn about. When you can build that passion for learning, then I think everything else will eventually take care of itself because once you start learning, you, the more knowledge you have, the more, the more, the higher skill you will be, the more things you know, like when things happen, you know what to do with the knowledge and then you can apply it better. And this is just, everything will just fall into place from there. So the first thing I think you need to do is develop that passion for learning. Yeah, that, that would be my biggest advice. That's a very good one. I personally think that routines are very important. I live by my morning routine and I have a podcast coming up in a few weeks where I'll go over the impenetrable morning routine that you can have as well too. But I wanted to ask, do you have routines, David, or are you more sporadic in your approach? I'm pretty random. No, actually, if anything, I, I hate routine. I guess depend like, well, anything has pro and cons and I guess it depends on how you applied it, right? But I don't really have any sort of routine, to be honest. I said, wake up. I usually stay in bed for half an hour, checking my phone and do some light work, reading the news, do some posts on Instagram. So I, yeah, I guess if it is, I just spend, yeah, the morning sort of like thinking, okay, what do I want today? What do I want to do today? What kind of things that I need to get to be done today? And then I just do it. I don't, I don't think I have any routine. So David, one of the questions I always like to ask my guests is if you could meet anyone living or dead, who would that person be and why? If anyone I would like to meet, I think I, I would like to meet the, uh, the ancient philosophers, like Socrates, uh, like, yeah, like the ancient philosophers from 2,000, 3,000 years, or oh, from a long time ago, I like to pick their brain. Yeah, because I, I am, I, I, I like philosophy, and yeah, that's that's the main reason why. Just to pick their brain to see what, because a lot of the concept, a lot of the philosophical concept that they came up back then, like long, long time ago, still apply to the modern world. And the thing is, and a lot of the question. The funny thing is that a lot of the same questions, the same problems that they had back then, even with thousand years later, we still haven't had the answer. We still haven't be able to to figure out to give have a concrete answers. Like what's the meaning of life? Why do we do what we do? What is our purpose? What is what is our life purpose? Those are the things that we are still each of us still trying to answer for ourselves, to try to figure out the answer for ourselves, right? Right. Yeah, I mean that's. I, I would like just to have a, a, an intellectual conversation with with those people. David, you had so much great content today, and I know our listeners are going to want to be all over how to get in touch with you. Can you please share how they can do so? I have my two Instagram account. That's where I most that I'm most active on. The first one is my personal one called I am David Dang. So is it I am David, my last name, D-A-N-G, I am David Dan. That's the first outlet that people can get more to know more about me. That's my personal account where I share my own thoughts, my, my own perspective of the world. And then my business account is Entrepreneurship Facts. Uh, that's where I share more general motivational calls, inspiring calls, business related stuff, entrepreneurship stuff. So you can also follow me there as well. So those are the two main places that you can get a reach of me, but follow my personal account. David, that was great. And I know one of the things that you help people with is going from zero to a hundred thousand followers. Can you tell them 
your secret to doing that and how you help? So that's that's one of them. that's my my main business right now to help entrepreneurs build a personal brand, build a following, right? Which I briefly talk about. Really, the only secret is to have good content, and then if people see it, they like it, they follow you. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's the the business, the main thing that I'm doing right now. Yeah, David, thank you so much for being on the show today. I know that our listeners are going to get so much value from what you had to say today. And I truly appreciate you spending time with me today and helping us ignite potential everywhere. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for having me on the show. It was a really fun talk. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. What a great episode that was with David Dang. I am so excited he was able to share and unpack so much information for you today and tell you that secret for how to grow your Instagram followers. I'm so thankful for David being on the show and appreciate all of you who are tuning in to watch or listen to it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. The purpose of our show is to make passion go viral. And we do that by sharing with you the knowledge and skills that you need to unlock your hidden potential. If you want to hear more, please subscribe to the Passion Struck Podcast on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcasts at. And if you absolutely love this episode, we'd appreciate a five-star rating on iTunes and you sharing it with three of your most growth-minded friends so they can post it as well to their social accounts and help us grow our Passion Struck community. If you'd like to learn more about the show and our mission, you can go to passionstruck.com where you can sign up for our, our newsletter, look at our tools, and also download the show notes for today's episode. Additionally, you can listen to us every Tuesday and Friday for even more inspiring content. And remember, make a choice, work hard, and step into your sharp edges. Thank you again for joining us.